Hey everybody, welcome to yet another edition of Sweetwater Students Online. We're going to start things off a little game tonight, so let's have a little fun together. If you're watching this with friends, you can text back and forth, or you're watching it with family who are sitting right there next to you, play along. You can also, if you're watching the premiere live chat right now on YouTube. So this game has the longest title in the world, I think. Let's stay social, but keep our distance and try to figure out these distances socially. Yep, that's right. We're going to guess distances. And uh, let's just say this now. No Siri, no Google. Just guess. It'll be more fun that way. I'm so glad to see you here tonight or to uh, know that you're watching anyway, right? This whole socially distant thing is making me a little stir crazy. It may be making you that way too. Let's forget about all that for a little while tonight and uh, have a little fun. So you're going to guess the distance. I'm going to guess the distance. What is the total distance from Orlando, Florida to Anaheim, California? What do you think? Is it A, B, C, or D? Log in your answer. They're about as far apart as you can be in the continental U.S. The one correct answer is 2,493 miles. You got it right? Pat yourself on the back. You got it wrong? It's okay. Try again with the second one here. What is the distance from the Earth to the Sun? What is the distance from the Earth to the Sun? Is it A, B, C, or none of the above? There are experts here, and then there are those of us who uh, think KMS means kilometers and I think miles, y'all. All right, what'd you get? Correct answer is A, 149 million of those European things. All right, so the hit song from 1988, I was a, a sophomore in school then, and the song title is going to be I'm Going to Be. I'm just going to give you a hint about this. It's A, B, C, or D. One is correct, and the song, although I don't sing, would sound like And I Would Walk. Yes, my bad singing, you still have no idea, right? Well, what do you guess? Is it A, B, C, or D? Correct answer is D. I can hear the song in my head right now, but due to copyright, I can't play the song for you on this video. So, let's go to this. Is it Yongge Yongge Yongwa? Who knows? It's in Toronto, though. Maybe you know. Maybe you've been to Toronto. I have not. I hear it's a lovely city. They had a great team in the NBA a few years ago. What's the largest street in the world? It's this street. But how long is it? Oh, we're back to miles. My happy place. So what do you think? Is it A, B, C, or D? Keep in mind, it hasn't been D yet. Could this be the time? The answer is C, 1,178 miles. That's a long street, so you could live on the same street as your best friend and it'd take you two days to get there to visit if you're driving. True or false? Miami, Florida. Is it closer to Brazil than it is to Washington State? Is that true? Miami's closer to Brazil than Washington State? Well, there's two answers to pick on here. Is it true or false? The correct answer is, it's true. Believe it or not. I think that was from an old show, right? Ripley, believe it or not. Heard of that? If not, there's lots of weird and cool facts there, and lots of tourist trap museums around the world to go see old relics in of world records that have been broken. I haven't broken any world records. Have you? Who holds the world record for the long jump with a total distance of 8.95 meters? Is it Carl Mike Hedjay? Did I say that right? Or Mitchell? What do you think? A, B, C, or D? There's only one name on the list I recognize, and that would be Carl Lewis, who has a uh, rousing rendition of the National Anthem. You should watch that on YouTube sometime in an hour or so. Look up Carl Lewis sings the National Anthem. It'll bless you deep down. Uh, but it, it's actually Mike Powell, who uh, I learned that tonight. Maybe you did too. Okay, here's another one. The Burj Khalifa in Dubai is the tallest building in the world with a total distance of Staying on this whole meter thing, 828 meters. That's tall. 
What is the second tallest building in the world though? Is it One World Trade? A lovely building by the way. International Commerce Center, Shanghai Tower, or Princess Tower in Dubai? What do you think and have you been to any of these? I've been to the base of one of them. As I stood there at the 9-11 uh, memorial, I was impressed by it, but I was more moved by the memorial. I'll never forget that. But what's the answer here? It's actually Shanghai Tower. And who would have thunk it? It's located in Shanghai. Now, 1994 movie Forrest Gump, one of my personal favorites, by the way. Forrest goes on a run that lasts three years, two months, 14 days, and 16 hours. What is the estimated distance that Forrest ran? Wow, that's a lot of running. I hope he had some good shoes on. I'm a fan of Brooks myself. 19,000 something, 21,000 something, 24,000 something, or none of the above. How far did Forrest run? Keep in mind, this is fiction. It's not a trick question, though. It's what he ran in the movie in real life. He didn't run a step. So, the correct answer is... Actually, 19,024 miles. Impressive. Okay, what else we have here in 2013? It's Rita Furman set the record for riding a bike. What is it? Riding this device, this mode of transportation, underwater for a total distance of 1.3 miles. I mean, unicycle underwater 1.3 miles? Really? A tricycle? Seriously? A snowmobile? Can the engine take that? Or a submersible scooter. B seems like the absolute winner on this, right? Here's the answer. I see a unicycle. Uh, maybe I'll look that up and watch it later too. So much fun to be had looking at these uh, videos of these, these world records and uh, weird things like underwater unicycles. But yeah, you know, what's the distance between a regulation soccer nets goalpost? What do you think here? Is it 7.32 meters? eight yards, 24 feet, or all the above? This is a trick question. Hmm, let's find out. You got your answer ready? It's actually all the above. How great is that? Neither of those two maxed again, meters, to a foreign language to me. So uh, glad you chose to be here tonight. It's gonna be a seven minute message in just a moment after a few other uh, surprises. God, 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 God.
Family. God. Family. God. God. Family. Friends. God. Friends. Family. God. Friends. School. Family. Friends. God. School. Money. Friends. School. Family. God. School. Money. School. Family. God. School. Social distancing. School. God. Sports. School. Social distancing. God. Sports. Social distancing. God. Sports. Social distancing. God. The ladies. God. Sports. Social distancing. Diggers. 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 Social distancing. Diggers. Diggers. God. So how's it going with you? What are you learning during this time we're in right now? I've had moments in the desert where I just feel bleh. I felt hopeless, fearful, like the walls were caving in. I feel like I'm driving my family crazy too. I mean, I know Aiden's enjoying destroying me at Super Smash Brothers on Wii U. And um, Penny's enjoying binging Amazon Prime with me. But other than that, I could probably be a little irritating to my family because I'm an extrovert. I love to be around people. I get energy from being around people. And I talk non-stop. So uh, they're having to listen to me non-stop. It's unreal, really. But we'll get through it, right? Did I describe someone in your house right then? So I've uh, been trying to get through things, but I've also spent a lot of hours lately being creative and innovative, and it's really sparked something in me to learn how to better create online content, which I've spent a ton of time doing for our church. So uh, there's some good coming out of this, and I think if we take a deep look at ourselves, there's a lot of good coming out of what we're going through right now. So what are you learning in this? I posed the question the other day on Remind and also on Facebook. That way I wanted to get students, parents, youth workers, and people from our church and who follow our church's page in general to respond. And I had a few responses. And uh, little did they know, they were helping shape this five-minute message. Jenny Hayes, she's a young attorney from our church, and she's quite entertaining. <laughs> she said she's learning that her hobbies were eating in restaurants, participating in non-essential services, and touching her face. I think most of us can relate to that, right? Shannon Jordan, a youth parent, uh, says she's learning to be patient to not be critical of others' comfort levels during the pandemic, and to keep our eyes on Jesus while also not being fearful. Now, one of our seniors, class of 2020, you guys have had to pivot, uh, Brianna Pereira says she's learning to focus on the good situations and to be grateful for the good times. Also, she's learning that if things are meant to be, they'll happen in good time, in God's time. She also mentioned learning to not worry about things we can't control. That's tough right now, isn't it? But we're learning. Now, Camille Marcus is a dear friend to my family, one of our youth workers, and uh, she posed a lot of great thoughts on this question, too. And uh, her biggest thing, she said, is the no-brainer part of it, that God is telling us to be still and know that He is God, as it says in Psalm 46.10. For a diverse few times for me, if you've been around the last few months, uh, the second part of that verse, part B, if you will, God says, I'll be exalted among the nations. I'll be exalted in the earth. As Camille said, uh, if we won't make the time for God, then he loves us so much that he'll make the time for us to spend with him. She's also excited about the restoration of family time and the restoration of marriages. Because marriage and family is such a big deal to God. How big? Well, in Genesis 2, 24, 
The Bible says, Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. See, God made marriage between a man and a woman, and he made the family right then in Genesis chapter 2, the very, very first part of the Bible. And it's a big deal. It matters. The enemy, Satan, knows that. And he's trying to tear marriages and families apart. This quarantine's actually giving people time to get closer, to restore bonds. Now, on a total different level, pollution's down. The world is cleaning up. I read a report today that touts um, the pollution levels as being so low in Los Angeles and Beijing and big, stinky, polluted cities like that, that you can actually see blue skies from the city. And then Venice, that historic water city. Venice, the, the canals are actually clearing up. You can actually see through the water instead of it being murky and muddy and polluted. Does God really care about the environment though? Actually, yeah, he made us as humans as caretakers over it. Genesis 1:26 through 28 says, God says, let us make man in our image after our likeness and let him have dominion over all the animals of the earth and over everything in the sea and everything on the land. So basically he made us the caretaker and he made us in his image as male and female. And uh, he said to be fruitful and multiply. So Adam and Eve did so and we're all descendants of them today, but we're also given responsibility of taking care of the planet. So this is actually a good thing happening. Uh, my friend Scott Wesley Brown, he asked this question, is God using one microscopic virus that's a billionth of our size to strip away much of what the world worships? Wow. The world, families, individuals, we've made God either forgotten, irrelevant, or simply a God of convenience who is way down our priority list until disaster strikes. God said in Psalm 46.10, not only be still and know that he is God, but that he will be exalted in all the nations across the earth. He'll be exalted in families. He'll be exalted in individuals. So take this time to laugh and reflect about our habits like Jenny Hayes. And take this time, like Shannon said, to be less critical and less fearful, more trusting. Like Brianna said, to trust God's timing and to trust that he's in control. And then like Camille said, to see God at work out there right now in individuals, in marriages, and families, and all of creation. So what's God teaching you through this time? Yeah, everybody hurts sometimes, I know that's what they say But right now it seems this loneliness won't go away yeah. Can anybody feel this heartache? Is anyone around? Feels like we're running round in circles, we can't catch a breath We can't enjoy the moment when we always want what's next yeah. Just when I can't take no more It's when I hear you say Don't hang your head when you get lonely There's nowhere I can hide From the one who gave his life So I could get back mine yeah. So when you can't take no more Look up and hear him say Don't hang your head when you get lonely No, I'll never leave your side And don't go thinking you're the only One that can get it right Yeah, you got my Every morning, 
Your grace sustains all of my life. You are the one that I run to. In you I am satisfied. Oh, your mercy is new every morning. Your grace sustains all of my life. You are the one that I run to. In you I am satisfied. Don't hang your head when you get lonely. No, I'll never leave your side. And don't.